The portal is popping, and we're going to talk about it. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the book, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Fox. What's up, everybody? We're back. It's uh, episode 29 of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Five, and the portal is popping. Uh, right now, it kind of looks like Auburn's been on the uh, wrong side of it, but I think if you really look at it, uh, none of it really comes as a huge surprise. You lose a guy in football, you lose a fan favorite in basketball, and then we're just going to talk about in general, like what what is this? Po- what is the portal look like two or three years into it? What do we think it's going to look like moving forward? But before we talk about that, we got to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes with Active Wealth Management. Uh, uh, Check him out, activewealth.com, annuity360.net. Either one, you can get in touch with him. Look, I know we all like to be cowboys. We like to get on our little acorn accounts and and, and investment, investment accounts and things like that and trade on our own. But we don't ever check out the fine print and check out all those fees that a lot of times it's almost impossible to out earn it in interest uh, or or gains or things like that. So check out Ford. Uh, He'll teach you how to keep your portfolio essentially fee free almost uh, or or minimize fees uh, as much as possible. Help you kind of keep the money uh, as much money as possible that you earn. So check him out. Tell him more Eagle Ford Stokes activewealth.com. So Auburn loses a four-star defensive back uh, when he was cr- recruited, J.D. Rim, to the portal. Uh, that's one of the most recent uh, bits of news. Uh, it's not really coming as a huge, huge shock. Uh, I think back on sometime, sometime in November, I believe around November 8th, Hugh mentioned something about J.D. Rim. He said, we're working through some personal issues. Okay, so – when you see something like that, when you see a player go into the portal, you really got to take the whole context around the whole situation and understand what's going on. And I think this was sort of a long time coming, unfortunately. J.D. Rim, one of the blockbusters of the Harson first class, uh, you really took advantage of LSU, I believe it's Orgeron getting fired, uh, and you picked off a few of those commits before they really got Brian Kelly situated, get, got him hired and got him in. Regardless, I think if he wasn't the top-rated player of that class, he was close to the top. And had a lot of high expectations, got a little bit of run as a freshman, and then sort of started falling down the depth chart. And then I think if you, if you take that quote – I mean, take that quote, okay, and understand what we're saying. There's probably some extracurricular uh, issues, if you don't, if you understand what I'm saying. There's there's some stuff outside of football uh, that that probably hindered JD uh, from becoming, uh, I guess, realizing his talent. But the good news is sometimes issues like this uh, can help spark a kid to. Uh, you know, change his career. You've seen it a bunch. You've seen it a bunch. You've seen guys change schools, get a different environment, uh, and then, you know, blossom, blossom, get better, uh, turn things around. And that's what we're going to obviously hope for, for J.D. Rim. I, uh, one of my memories of J.D. Rim this past season, I believe we're playing, it was one of the, you know, non-con games, maybe Sanford or something like that. Whoever, one of the easier teams that we were playing, big pick. And I was sitting on that side of the field kind of saw it the whole way. I saw him uh, creep under, uh, and the quarterback didn't see him, and I, and we saw it the whole way, saw it p- uh, interception. So he had some good moments at Auburn, never really fully realized his potential one way or the other, whether it was just uh, overall talent or, you know, off-the-field stuff that kept him from uh, being better. Uh, it just didn't work out. So wish him the best. This is part of the portal. Uh, I mean, this is part of it. This is part of – roster management in 2024 uh you got to be able to your spots have to be maximized if you got a scholarship you got to be able to get the maximum value out of it and i just don't think it was there with jd rim and then another thing is 
And I, I was talking about this the other day and, and the constant things that I'm hearing about practice and, and, and spring practice and workouts and things like that is the past two defensive back classes. OK, the holdover class with Hugh Freeze and then this last one coming in, the guys that are on campus, I think there may be just still a few that are that are coming. But so far, the guys that are on campus out of these last two classes, I don't think there's been a miss. I think every one of these guys can play. And when you are when you have some possibly some off the field issues and you're just not quite advancing, I mean, these these young guys are coming in and they're going to be tough, tough to keep off the field, especially at corner. You got guys like Tyler Scott, Colton Hood. All you're hearing about is how good these dudes are performing. Uh, in spring. And then you got some highly rated guys, Jay Crawford, another guy that's in this past class who who you're hearing great things about. So if you come in, if you're an older guy and you're not putting a thousand percent, again, I'm not saying that's all that that's a hundred percent what was going on with JD Rim, but if if in general, if you're not trying to push, you can not only get surpassed, but you may be have to find somewhere else to finish your career. Uh, it's the that's probably the more ugly side of the portal from the school standpoint is, you know, Daryl Daprich said it the best on on Locked on Auburn. It cuts both ways now. Kids can leave and then, you know, you can be asked to leave. So, uh, again, read it. Look, look at the whole context of of when a player leaves. OK, J.D. Rim, uh, great talent coming out of high school. For whatever reason, I think he was behind some really talented defensive backs. Sometimes that can, you know, get you frustrated. I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm not getting run. Possibly lead to some disciplinary issues. You, you saw the quote from Hugh Freeze last uh, last November. And then if you bring in some young guys and you're not, you know, you're not on your uh, crossing your uh, T's and dotting your eyes, you're going to be you're going to be surpassed and possibly asked to leave. So. It's a. It could be a little bit of a, a motivational factor, uh, in in the, uh, you know, in the uh, quiver, so to speak, of, of the coaches as well. It's like, hey, look, y'all can cut us, so you know we got we we're gonna have to do what we have to do as well. So, uh, wish JD Rim the best. What I don't know that you're gonna look to bring. I don't think you really have to bring anybody to replace him. I think the portal for Auburn is gonna be focused almost. I don't want to say 100% on the on the trenches, but mainly along the defensive line. Can you pick off a few guys to supplement that interior? I think we're looking at a guy from Indiana. I know that there's been articles written about him. I think his name – his last name is like Bleedy, Philip Bleedy possibly. Uh, and he's a senior – uh, a senior defensive lineman. He's played played a lot of football for Indiana. He had a really good season this past year. He'll be a definitely an interior guy. That's one that they're talking. That's one that they're talking to, uh, big time. Yeah, Philip Bleedy, uh, that they're talking to right now. And then I'm sure there's going to be a couple of others pop uh, when the portal actually opens. Maybe some familiar faces. You know, maybe you pick off uh, somebody that you can come in, not just be a body, but be a factor. So Auburn's going to add uh, probably four to five spots. Mostly, I would say, you know, three or four of them on the defensive line between interior and edge, and then maybe look at some best player availables. If you got to go quarterback, if you lose one and you have to add one, uh, you know, if you lose uh, one of the younger guys and then you have to go add somebody to, you know, fill up your room, that could be something I'm not. No, I'm, And then obviously if, if you feel like there's a guy out there that pops that could make your room better, may, you may be challenged for a starting job. You obviously would probably take that too. And then I don't know, wide receiver. Again, we talked about this on Zach's show. You hear a ton about Cam Coleman. He is he's the guy. He he is everything that we thought he would be. Uh, you hear a lot about Robert Lewis coming in and being able to uh, be a factor right away. And then you don't really hear a ton, um, I guess. After that, Camden Brown. You hear he does well. Is he, is that going to carry over into the season? Because we've heard that from him in three or four different camps. Uh, the past couple of years, two springs, two falls. Cam Brown's the guy. Will it translate? Will it translate? 
And obviously you do have the young guys coming in in the summer, the young guys, your, your uh, Perry Thompson's and Malcolm Simmons, but that's, you know, they're obviously going to be behind the eight ball as well. So do you look to bring in a big time wide receiver? If one were to show themselves, one were to pop in, we'll have to see. So, well, uh, football is going to be fun. Portal season's fun. I'm going to talk about port, uh, the portal in general a little bit later and my opinions on it. Uh, basketball, you have a tough season. Uh, I mean, you have a great season, actually. Uh, you have a great season that ends way too early in the tournament. And within three or four days, you know, within three or four days, you're already making roster moves. And unfortunately, the first one was – you know, probably one of the more fan favorite guys, Katie Johnson, for the better part of, well, he's been here for two seasons, no, three seasons now. Uh, and all three, I would say, were filled with super high highs and super low lows. I think there was a stretch on the Jabari team. I think there was a stretch on the Jabari team uh, that first half of the season where he may have been the best player on the team. Uh, that first half of the season, he would, he, especially in some of those uh, preseason, not preseason, those uh, non-conference tournaments, taking over games, uh, on, especially on the defensive side. And then, I, if I remember correctly, in that first season, he had a little bit of a wrist injury somewhere in the middle of that season. And seemingly since then, the three-point shot, just left him, unfortunately. The three-point shot just absolutely left him. Now, he could finish. He could get to the basket. That that was never a problem. But the three-point shot, which when you're a when you're a six-foot two guard, okay, you're talking about going up against some of the freakiest athletes on the court. You're talking about you're typically going up against your 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", guys. If you're struggling from three, it's going to be really, really tough for you. Now, on the defensive side, he never really seemed to have much of an issue. He could guard pretty much anybody uh, in that – any guard out there, he could he could pretty much frustrate the crap out of you <laughs> to the point where you're either going to turn it over, you're going to get a retaliatory foul, or, you know, he was, he was just a beast on defense. But the offensive side was a struggle. And you saw as, as time went on, the, uh, the minutes declined. And just overall, I think it was time – I think it's time for KD as well, you know, to go try to find a better spot that he could get more minutes. Because you typically, as you get older, your minutes increase, and it was going the opposite way with KD. And I think you just you, – with, with the emergence of Denver Jones, and you saw how effective it can be when you have a two-guard like that that can run, can finish, and can shoot threes, and he's – Six three, six four. You know, why not go try to find another one? Why not try? I mean, what's 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 you're doing it yourself a disservice uh, as Bruce Pearl? You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't go try to find, you know, a replacement. Uh, not a replacement, but if you didn't go try to find someone over better that could take more minutes at the two uh, that could back up Denver split it with him 50-50 and you don't feel such that drop off offensively. You got to imagine we talk about depth. We talk about depth a lot with basketball and it's not it's it's not the same and I talked about this a little bit on the last show. It's not the same as football where one guy comes in, one guy goes out. When you sub in your second line, you can't sub in just a total uh lineup of offensively, I don't want to say offensively challenged, but you don't want to sub in a lineup where you're going to be handicapped offensively. So you have to work on rotations and things like that. So it's t- so that you can have an offensive player in there with a, uh, a backup that's maybe not as strong offensively. Okay. So what if you could just sub in another offensive threat? Uh, I think that's one thing that would be, uh, I think that's one thing you're going to see Bruce go for uh, this off season. And and honestly, to to Hyde Pettiford coming in, he plays a lot of two. He could play point guard and he could play two. He is an explosive athlete that can shoot the three. So, you know, is he going to eat – would he have eaten a lot of minutes from KD? Who knows? But regardless, uh, I'm not going to say – I'm so thankful that he came when he did 
Uh, he was a sh- jungle favorite. He he could get that place going like nobody else. He could get that place fired up like nobody else. He could get his team a lot of times fired up like nobody else. And I think in general he was a great team guy, really well liked. He did – sometimes he let his emotions get to the best of him. You know, when the highs are high and you're emotional, it's great. But also – when you're emotion, when you're an emotional guy, when the low, when there's the lows, they can be just as bad, the opposite way. So sometimes it led to uh, you know league leading technical fouls. <laughs> you know, luckily none of them really seemed to affect us that much. Uh, but you did see what could happen uh, if you can't keep that all under control all the time. You could you know have an issue in in the NCAA tournament that could cost you. So. Again, I don't think it was anything like that. I think it was just time. You're here three years. Your minutes are starting to dwindle a little bit. You're bringing in a hot shot freshman that could play a similar position as you. It's your last year of basketball. Maybe go try to find somewhere you can get more minutes. And uh, we're going to miss him. But it's just part of it, man. It's just part of it. And I don't think that's it with 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 the portal in, in Auburn uh, basketball. Uh, there could be at least at least one more player go, um, and you know that it could be. Unfortunately, it could be an Aiden Holloway. Uh, at, at least Justin Hokinson put out that up until uh, I think it was yesterday, he hadn't really had the discussion, and Bruce had had the discussion with a lot of folks. Bruce and Stephen had had a discussion with a lot of folks about the future, uh, including KD and, and you know Chad Baker Mazar, who you feel very confident is coming back. You know that conversation maybe not had ha- have happened yet with with Aiden. So is that a sign that he could be going? And then what do you do? I think it's no secret that you have to bring in a stud point guard, you, and you have to bring in a guy who can get to the basket uh, when you know it's crunch time and get to the line can hit threes in crunch time, and somebody that you, you just know when they bring the ball down the court. <laughs> In in crunch time situations, you know you're you're safe. You know that this guy has got us uh, going in the right direction. And uh, at times, both both of those guys, Trey Donaldson and Aiden, at times you felt good about it. And then a lot of times you saw the wide eyes. You saw the you know a little bit of the moment start to take over. Uh, and I, you three years in a row of early exits, you you want to try to figure out a way to fix it. And I think this is what you're going to see. And it's going to be it's going to be tough. It's going to be not necessarily cutthroat, but, you know, it may seem that way. You know, Auburn's sort of been on the – Auburn's never really been on that side of it where you have to really, uh, I guess, let people go. Um, but you may have to start doing that. And I think if you want to win – and you want to – with the game the way it is today, uh, you may have to make some tough decisions and, and, and you know, recruit over guys already on your roster uh, with guys on other rosters. The portal the, – the amount of guards in the portal right now is unreal. It really is. The options are, are outrageous. You're talking multiple, multiple guys, albeit at lower levels, scoring – 20 points a game, you know, you know, shooting extremely high clips from three at point guard, Uh, several, several guys. And uh, we're going to learn these names. Uh, I'm sure you're going to hear more about them. They're going to start visiting soon. I would imagine uh, as as time goes on. So obviously look for Auburn to add at least um, at least a solid uh, uh, stud point guard. And then you'll have to see what happens with Jani Broom and Dylan Cardwell because, Dylan, I mean, Janai is obviously the big fish that you would pay. I'm not pay. The 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 guy that you would do anything you could nil wise as far as uh, helping him get deals, whatever you do, whatever you got to do to get Janai Broom to come back. And if if you can't, you obviously know you you're willing to do what you have to do to go get uh, the best portal big guy out there. So probably looking to add two, maybe three from the portal uh, in basketball. Point guard for sure. You, you, I feel. I just feel like you got to get a point guard, and then uh, you know some sort of bouncy forward slash guard type position that could play. You know, 
the four or could play the three, you know, a combo type deal like that. And then maybe a two guard. That's assuming you keep Janai. Uh, if that's assuming you keep Janai. If you don't, obviously you got to add a center. So the portal giveth, the portal take portal taketh away, and it's taken our uh uh fan favorite Katie Johnson. But again, I think it was I don't think it was necessarily a him spurring us type situation. I think it was if it's not mutual, I, th I think it was pretty close to mutual. I think it was time. It was time. So it's going to hurt. Uh, the memories are there. The memories are are young. So we have to uh, just remember that. Uh, remember that when you think about KD. Don't think about uh, you know this whole situation. Don't think about him being negative towards us because I think both sides were sort of ready to to move on. So we wish, obviously, wish him the best of luck. And uh, I can just think about so many times. Uh, yeah, I can, I remember his faces, you know, his, his emotional outbursts and things like that after we made a big play and Katie would come in. This is, this, I, I bet Katie led the league in two things. Okay. Led the whole world in two things. Number one, uh, making opposing players, making opposing teams have to call a timeout, whether it be from a, turnover creating a turnover into, into a fast breaks scenario or coming in and and uh either making an opposing team call a timeout or getting to that tv break timeout you know what i mean where a foul is called or something like that and then uh you have to go to a tv timeout it seemed like he would come in something crazy would happen the crowd would go crazy and then play would have to be stopped <laughs> that just seemed like i bet he led the league in that happening and then number two led the league in layups finishing, finishing, when I'm talking about finishing, his body on a layup, finishing three rows deep in the bleachers. It seemed like the, the cheerleaders under our goal, uh, they're going to miss KD, but they're probably going to feel a whole lot safer because KD was an absolute animal. And when he would go up, he was hitting the ground afterwards and he was sliding and he was going deep. I mean, just the dude just went 100 miles an hour. There was no throttle. It was just – full speed, 100% of the time. So when he went off the glass, when he went up uh, trying to finish, uh, he was going down because he's a smaller guy. So he's going to get banged around and he was sliding and he was rolling. So uh, as far as being on the ground, depth in off of the court after a layup, I guarantee you he led the conference in that, uh, the nation in that, and then creating TV timeouts and opposing timeouts. I swear he had to lead the world in that. So we'll have to uh, – hopefully Chad can be that guy uh, moving forward, maybe just a little bit more reined in, you know, or who knows what we find in the portal if it could be somebody that could sort of replace that intensity. So good luck to KD, and uh, we obviously wish him the best. Before we talk about the portal in general for basketball and football, we got to give a shout-out to plainscoffee.com use coupon code button for 10% off every single order ever go ahead and mark the coffee off of your shopping list when you go grocery shopping you don't have to write coffee on there anymore because you can have it shipped to your front door and it's going to be better coffee better coffee shipped to your front door you don't got to get out in the heat you don't have to get out in the cold you don't have to get out in the rain you don't have to get out in the sun it just shows up at your house on your front door, freshly ground, days before it ships, sometimes minutes, probably not, but it, at least uh, a few days before it ships, it's already ground. The aroma is amazing. They got a roast for everybody, dark, light in the middle, whatever you're looking for, they have it. And if you don't like coffee, they have teas uh, that you can hammer down. If you're a tea person, hammer it down, plainscoffee.com. Use coupon code button for 10% off. All right, the portal in general, okay, uh, I feel like young people, we kind of dig it, or I say we, young people dig it, middle age to the older guys, you hate the portal, it's it's ruining college, it's ruin, ruin, ruining college sports, I'm sort of in the middle, I'm right around middle age, I absolutely love the portal, I think it's the best, <laughs> I think it's the best thing that's ever happened to uh, from a fan perspective, now coaches may hate it, and if they do, that's fine. But from a fan perspective, the portal is unbelievable, especially if you love recruiting. You know, I was the guy when you play NCAA football and things like that, that you would recruit, you would just build your roster and then sim the whole season. 
You know what I mean? Like roster building to me was a more fun part of it. And now this is like an extra element that you can use to, to manage your roster. And uh, I absolutely love it. I love freedom. I love the idea that the kids uh, don't have to get bound to a school uh, in a bad situation for, uh, you know, whether it be they made a bad decision on, you know, not really researching the depth chart. And it's going to take multiple years for them to be able to sort of unseat someone uh, and, and, and take over their position. I don't necessarily think that's quitting. You know, a lot of people, oh, if, back in my day, you had to work your way up to the top. Well, you know, fine. If you want to do that and, and work your way up and play one season, uh, a lot of these guys have uh, bigger aspirations. And if they can go find a better situation and not have to sit out a year or multiple years, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Because on the flip side, on the flip side, there are evaluation misses. There just are. Sometimes you just miss on an evaluation. There's not a click between you and the kid. And uh, you just – it doesn't work out. So now the coaches also have uh, the freedom to manage their roster from that perspective, you know. And, I, you know, I know when you couple it with NIL, there, there's some problems. NIL is, is, is great in a sense, but it's also a little bit of a mess until they, you know, really get some rules in place. But as far as just the portal, I could not love it more. It extends the recruiting season. You get two uh, action-packed. Um, you get two action-packed portal periods in, in December and January, and then you get the spring portal as well. It's just like almost year-round recruiting because summer's a big recruiting time for high school. Even though there's no sports, summer's a huge time for recruiting high school because there's camps, there is uh, visits and things like that, and you see a lot of commitments and stuff like that as well. You see big, you know, that's whenever you have a lot of your cookouts, your big cat weekend, stuff like that. So uh, I always look forward to, uh, I just look forward to the portal now uh, every single, you know, every single year, every single period that rolls around basketball. I already said it, but the amount of quality players that you have to pick from, I don't even know how you do it. I don't even know how you know who to pick. For example, Stetson, uh, they played, I believe, UConn in the first round. They got drilled, but they have a point guard. Scored like 23 points a game. Shot like almost 40% from three. He's like 6'3". Unbelievable point guard. How do you know that will translate? You know, you had Denver Jones, who was also a 20-something point scorer at FIU on a non-tournament team. Uh, I mean, Stetson was a tournament team, but you had uh, – Denver was unfortunately on a non-tournament team. And it took him a while. It took him a little bit to sort of get comfortable at this level. How do you know a game will transfer? How do you know a game will transfer? And then you transfer immediately. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. So I think what you're going to start seeing, though, and I think the tournament, I, I look at teams like Kentucky. I look at teams, honestly, like uh, you know, like Auburn uh, with a, a couple of times with young point guards. I think you're going to start to see – basketball in college is such a weird sport in general because your whole season, you know, is decided in, you know, six, six-ish six games. You know, in football, if you win an SEC championship, it's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, and, and then if you get knocked out in the playoffs, you know, it, it stinks. But, you know, uh, we still – like, you, you, you really – honor and, and look at those SEC champions for years and years and years. Basketball, you you do, but it's on a much lower level. You, you spend your whole season, you play 30-plus games, and then your whole season, the success or failure is judged in the last, you know, three to six games, however many games you play in the tournament. So, Team, you're start, I think what you're going to start to see is when you go from a team-building aspect, you're going to start to see the gamble on, I think, the gamble on freshman, highly ranked guards. I think you're going to start to see a lot of the programs move away from that. Uh, I think, you know, used to you would see teams like Butler, the teams that, like, you don't really hear about a lot, your Butlers, your Davidsons, all those mid-major St. Mary's, all these teams that can make runs, they're typically much older teams. You know, Miami, 
a couple of years that took out Auburn. They were old, all, like almost all seniors, the ones that uh, knocked us off uh, in, uh, you know, in the second round when we had two first round picks, but they were both really young. You had a true freshman and then you had a true sophomore. Uh, so you see those, those, you see those teams like the teams that are either mid majors or lower on the totem pole of of the big Power Five conferences. All of a sudden, they may pop and have a big season. And you look, and their rosters are typically older. And then you got teams like Kentucky, who's got five of the top ten players in the country on their roster, but they're all freshmen. And you get to the tournament, and you start having issues. You start having issues getting out of the first weekend. And then you saw Auburn sort of do the same thing the last couple of years. You know, you have some hot shot freshman point guards, Aiden McDonald's All-American, probably could be a really good player uh, in, you know, two or three years. But that doesn't help you right now in March. So I think this is my prediction. I think what you're going to start seeing is – if they're smart anyway, if they're smart, I think what you're going to start seeing is you're going to start seeing the Blue Bloods shift and start sucking up all these great players in the portal. The Blue Bloods that are struggling. Let me let me, let me rephrase that. Blue Bloods that are that are they're poss- that are having issues because the talent uh the talent level is the parity is just greater than it's ever really seen. But I think what you're going to start seeing like a Kentucky if, if Calipari wants to keep his job he better go get some of the best, uh, the best uh, older guy point guards, seasoned point guards that he possibly can. Even though he had some amazing guys, dudes that can, that know how to play defense, dudes that know how to survive in a big uh, must-win scenario. I think you'll start seeing a lot of those type teams really go portal heavy. So what happens to all these hot shot guys? I, you know, you you think that's terrible, but. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of teams that typically won't recruit well, typically don't recruit well out of high school. They're going to start getting some opportunities at some of these top ranked guys because your your other guys or your bigger schools are going to start focusing a lot more on uh, focusing a lot more on evaluating and, and taking advantage of the portal. So again, the age won't change. As far as what you'll tip, I think what you'll typically see is like dudes that can, teams that can go on runs as far as basketball is concerned. I don't think necessarily the age, average age will change, but it may be the average age on what teams. You know, typically your younger teams from some of your bigger schools, uh, I think they'll start going a little bit older. And then some of the other, the other, uh, Teams will go a little bit younger, but they'll be a little bit more talented. Does that make sense? So I think you just I think what you're going to see in basketball is it just shift. Shift from uh the the bigger schools having heavy, high, heavy high school recruiting. I think they'll go portal. And I think the younger that'll open up uh that'll open up doors for the smaller schools to have higher recruiting for basketball, higher recruiting out of high school, uh, if higher levels of recruiting out of high school. So I just think you're going to start to see a little bit of a switch. You know, I think you're definitely going to see it. Um, Auburn could be one of the older teams in the country next year with a couple of uh, with a couple of additions. I would be very welcome to see that. I'll be very happy to see a vet- a big time veteran team that can score. I mean, Chad's going to have played five years of basketball. Uh, Chaney's going to play multiple years. Uh, he'll be on his third or fourth year of basketball. Janai will be on – if he comes back, he would be on his fourth or fifth year of basketball. Trey Donaldson will be in his third year. If you go find your veteran guard that's played, that played at a high level, you get, now you may have two guards with a lot of experience. Denver, a lot of experience. So I think that's probably what you – that's my prediction on what you'll see moving forward – out of some of the teams that are traditionally your blue bloods or at least playing at a high level right now. I think you'll start seeing those guys go portal heavy, and then the typically the guys that would be your older teams may get a chance to pick off some of these higher-ranked kids, and they may have some really talented kids come in uh, that can play early. So uh, basketball portal is going to be fun to watch moving forward. Football portal, I don't really think a ton is going to change. On football, I don't even really think football portal is that out of hand. I know you've had some freakish 
scenarios like the Caden Proctor, go to Iowa, take a couple checks, and then come back to Alabama. You know, I, I really think that's a one-off. It's it, it, to me, it, it, it's really terrible that that, that happened that way. Uh, but I think that's really a one-off scenario. I think the biggest where the portal hurts is when there's coaching changes because there's really nothing you can do about it, especially with the calendar. You just have to grin and bear it, basically. Uh, so especially like when you have a team like Alabama, who it's not really a firing of a coach, but it's a coach has had a lot of success that's stepping down. You know, you could see it. You know, Kirby Smart talks about – Kirby Smart talks about how much he hates the game the way it is. If he were to get tired of it and step down and go to the NFL, like – that Georgia would have a very similar issue of, of, of players going elsewhere. But I don't think you're going to see just like a program that's firing, like firing on all cylinders, one of their players, go, one of their better players going to a competitor that's also firing on all cylinders. It's going to be a lot of the same. It's going to be, you know, dudes looking to up their uh, game from going from a, maybe a smaller team in a big conference to a better team or going from a, you know, a G5 team to a P5 team, you're going to see a lot of that, and you're going to see it go the opposite way, where kids at Power 5 schools aren't necessarily performing where they need to perform, and then they move uh, move down. But you, you have so many players on the team, you have to, at least I think, you, you may need more of a mix, but I think you really got to focus still more on the uh, on the high school side because you got to build cult football is a culture like it's a it's a big time culture deal and you got so many players you kind of got to have a lot of those that have sort of been in the system and know how things work to be able to make it happen so i also i wonder if they'll continue to have two periods two portal periods for football just because of the calendar and the way the coach i know they move signing day for high school a little bit of ahead of the portal period opening so it's not happening at the same time. That may help a little bit. But, uh, I mean, NFL free agency only happens, I think, once a year. It's uh, You know, it just opens up and sometime in the spring, and, and that's when teams kind of move, uh, you know, move guys around. Uh, I don't really understand why that couldn't work. If we're going to go to a more NFL-ish type model, why not just do, you know, sort of copy that? It seems to be working. You know, it would hurt not being able to get guys in for spring but I honestly think with the way the calendar is, it might be welcomed from a coaching perspective because, uh, you know, it gives you time to sort of focus one way or the other, you know, focus on high school over here. And then I know my, when I know when my portal period opens up, it's one time I'm, I got ample time to analyze my spring roster and know what I need and, and, and kind of know where everybody sits that may be looking to go. So I'll know where, you know, who to go add. That could be something that may happen. I think that might make it a little bit better. But on the flip side, from a fan perspective, heck, I like all the different periods. I like having a uh, winter period. I like getting dudes in here in January. And then, you know, it's fun also in spring when you can possibly add, you know, a couple of under-the-radar guys. So portal's big, but I don't think it's going to be as much of a factor uh, in football as it is uh, in basketball. Basketball is going to be a, a big portal sport huge portal sport it really kind of already was if you think about it there's a lot of transfers in basketball even before excuse me even before the portal is really a thing so the portal's popping auburn is going to lose some folks auburn's going to gain some folks okay so when we lose someone look at the whole context of why of everything that was around that everything around that guy leaving look at uh, you know, look at off the field stuff, look at on the field stuff, on the court stuff, look at uh, their production, things like that as it relates to where we need to be. And, and, and don't just all, all of a sudden assume that every time you lose somebody uh, that the sky's falling because it go like, like I said, like Dap said, it goes both ways. You can add, you can subtract. Uh, and I think if it's utilized right, you can really, you know, you can really supplement your roster. You can really elevate your roster in a short amount of time and, and turn, uh, you know, a disappointment this past season into a positive very quickly, very quickly. So let's see what happens. It's going to keep popping over the next couple, next several weeks. And then when the portal period actually opens for football, it's going to be 
uh, outrageous. <laughs> so y'all hang in there and I'll keep you posted on it. Follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five, like, and subscribe to this video comment. I will respond. I'll respond to every comment. So if you want to have a conversation, you got a question, fire it in there. I'll answer. Hit me up on Twitter. We have, I have tons of folks. We talk all the time on Twitter. I love the interaction. Love the interaction. That's the only reason I really do this is for the interaction. So uh, I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on the portal. Do you think it's great? Do you think it's bad? Uh, do you think we should do away with it? Or do you love it like me? <laughs> you love it like me. Uh, so y'all have a great rest of the weekend. Let's see what happens over the weekend recruiting wise. Uh, and, uh, you know, out of the high school ranks, I think we've had some huge visits. Will they pay off soon? Next week could also be a big week for recruiting with A-Day. You always have a lot of excitement around A-Day. You may pop off a few commits uh, there as well. So y'all hang in there. War Eagle. And I uh, love talking about uh, love talking about this stuff with you. So y'all check me out next time. This is episode 29, closing in on 30, 29 of the Top Button Podcast. Stay buttoned. <laughs>